That music means it's time for movie reviews, and we're with film critic Don Morton. How you doing, Don? Well, I'm doing pretty critically well. This time we're meeting at the Pink Cow once again, and they have some menu specials going on we'll tell you about in just a few minutes. They do. All right. What films will you be reviewing this week? Three movies this week called The Congress, Mr. Turner, and Selma. All right. Worst first, as usual? Well, not worst, because all three movies are pretty good. So let's just say the least wonderful movie is called The Congress. All right. One of the existential themes broached in this live-action animation hybrid might be the digitized dehumanization of the movie business. That's quite a sentence. Political movie, huh? Yes, there's a lot of weirdness going on here, and it's kind of all over the place. It's made by Ari Fulman, who made Waltz with Bashir. Uh, it's a brave Robin Wright, who's perfect in the role, plays a version of herself. Her name's Robin Wright. She's a temperamental, bridge-burning actress whose only option left is to sell the rights to a digitized form of her person and then never act again and let the studio use her image any way they want. This sounds very psychedelic. It is. It gets even more psychedelic when you jump to a few decades later when an, an older Robin drives into what is called a restricted animation zone and she and her car turn into animations. Sounds a little bit like Roger Rabbit. Uh, a little bit, uh, but not not quite as clever. And, and uh, this place is populated only by fellow celebrity avatars of themselves. It's admittedly ambitious, but it's narratively murky. And it's not very funny. It's, it's kind of humorless, a film experiment that will dazzle some and baffle others. Next movie is called Mr. Mr. Turner. Turner. Is this about the guy who started CNN? No. The guy who created the steamroller? No. What's this movie about? This is about J.M.W. Turner. He was an 18th century English proto-impressionist and noted for his uncanny ability to actually paint light. Ah, a proto-impressionist. Yes, he was the inspiration behind Monet, Van Gogh, and the whole impressionist gang. He got the ball rolling. Dick Pope, on the other hand, is director Mike Lee's go-to cinematographer, and it is a wonderful thing for art lovers and moviegoers alike that he was the one to shoot this visually astounding, unconventional biopic. Who plays the artist? Okay, character actor Timothy Spall, who you've seen in at least nine Mike Lee movies before this. He has the lead role of a lifetime as the unpleasant, curmudgeonly, and inconsiderate visionary oddball. Anyway, it's not for everyone, but uh, but those on the right wavelength will be enthralled. Those unfortunates that are not may compare it to watching paint dry. It received one of the highest Metacritic ratings ever. You said a great movie for moviegoers and art lovers. Yes. What about for artists? artists? Will this be inspirational? Artists will already know who, uh, who, who Mr. Turner is, and they will be enthralled. Next movie is called Selma, but here in Japan it's called Glory. Go figure. What's this movie about? It's about Selma, Alabama. It's about Dr. Martin Luther King and the director Ava DuVernay in her attempt to define and humanize Dr. King, wisely offers a biographical fragment of his life instead of a full-fledged hagiography. What was that word again? Hagiography. It's, it's turning someone into a saint. Let's move on. Spielberg did the same thing in the movie Lincoln, just taking a short uh, period out of his life. Britain's David Oyelowo does a remarkable job in capturing the essence of the civil rights leader, warts and all. The film focuses on three months in early 1965. Now, King had already by this time made the I Have a Dream speech, and he'd won the Nobel Prize. But black people in Alabama were still being denied their right to vote, and he wanted to do something about it, and he wanted to do it quickly. President Lyndon Johnson was dragging his feet, wanting to focus instead on his war on poverty. Anyway, protest marches in Alabama were brutally beaten back by bigoted white lawmen. I sure remember that. Everybody remembers that scene on a road bridge uh, in Selma. It's burned into everyone's mind. And that's why the title of the movie is Selma. You, nothing gets by you, huh? And why did Dr. Martin Luther King choose Selma? Actually, it wasn't an accident. Uh, he was a more strategist than saint. 
King chose Selma for the confrontation precisely because the town's supercracker sheriff was very likely to resort to this kind of head-busting. Now, King shunned violence, but he could appreciate its effectiveness if perpetrated by the other side and caught on TV cameras. Brilliant tactic. The tactic virtually forced President Johnson into introducing the Voting Rights Act. So much for the benevolent white savior legacy, Lyndon. Who plays Lyndon Johnson? Tom Wilkinson does a good job of it, but he's kind of miscast. Anyway, the movie is urgent and suspenseful, and it couldn't be timelier given today's continued racial problems in the United States, exemplified by the Ferguson, Missouri killing and others. Would you say this is an inspirational movie? Of course it is. It's also educational, and uh, it's, it's, it's a joy to watch. Healing movie? More an informational movie. Okay. Well, we're here at the Pink Cow once again, Don, and we're being joined by the cow herder herself, Tracy Consoli, in person. How you doing, Tracy? I'm doing good. How are you guys? All right. Tell us what's on the menu. You have some new stuff going on. This month and next month, till July 14th, we are doing a cow rose rice special. And what is that? Well, cow rose is probably the most famous rice from California, and it's actually my favorite rice, being from California. That's the rice I always eat when I'm at home, and it's the same variety as Japanese rice, but because of the minerals in the soil, it has a little different flavor, so it's quite unique. All right. So, yeah, we're running weekly specials, and we've got vegetarian or with meat choices, and so each week we will have two featured rice bowls. And, of course, the burritos remain on the menu oh, all yeah. the time, Oh, yeah, burritos, right? burritos always. Burritos. Right. This is sort of like an unwrapped burrito. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, for the, a lot of people are doing the wheat-free diets these days, too, Maybe so... Sure. Naked, oh, naked oh burrito, I like you that. Call it, yeah. I like that. Naked the burrito, critic. right? Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, and, and what else is on the menu? Well, the burritos, as always. We'll also have some special featured events with buffets. And then Chef Andy is awesome, as anybody who's been here knows that. Andy, Andy, Andy. <laughs> and, oh, my guitarist just got here. All right. Um, <laughs> and, of course, you have entertainment here yes, at the Pink Cow as well, oh, right? Yes, we have. Oh, wonderful, wonderful musicians come through here and artists and burlesque dancers and a little bit of everything. All right. It's all happening at the Pink Cow across from Don Quixote in Roppongi. Yeah, check our website site at www.thepinkcow.com. And you're also on Facebook. Uh, oh, yeah. All over Facebook. All right. <laughs> Tracy Consoli, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Have Don a great Morton, night. Any any final word from you, Mr. Morton? Where's my burrito? Okay, that's <laughs> exactly. Don Morton, film it's critic from Metropolis Magazine. Thank you for joining us here on The Kong Show on the Japan Today website.